and thank you for joining us today. We're going to talk about filter measurements using a vector network analyzer, specifically the uh, MS4647B vector star. So we're going to talk about measurement parameters, error correction using SOLT calibration method, insertion loss measurements, bandwidth measurements, and out-of-band rejection. Where are filters used? Every single system, regardless of what it is, has filters uh, associated with it. They're in microwave systems, millimeter wave systems, 5G, uh, pretty much anything that's electronic has some type of filter in it. And what are filters used for? Uh, we use filters to allow energy to pass through frequency bands of our interest that our system is designed for and to block out noisy spectrum uh, so that our receiver can function correctly. And you should know that filters are on transmitters and receivers. There are many different types of filters that are out there. Um, there's so many of them out there that we couldn't possibly cover them all today. But the most common ones that we're going to run into and need to measure are low pass filters, high pass filters, band pass filters, and notch filters. And as you can imagine, they're pretty much self explanatory. A low pass filter is going to pass uh, low frequency and block high frequency for the spectrum that it's designed in. And high pass filters will pass high frequency and block low frequency. Band pass filters, they pass specific uh, frequency spectrum in block low and high. And notch filters will block a specific frequency. The first thing that we need to do uh, in order to measure a filter is set the start, stop, the number of data points, the IFP, which will determine the dynamic range of your measurement, and the trace setup. So we want to measure um, things that are of interest to our specification. And this is guided by the technical data sheet of the filter. Every commercial filter, every filter that's designed out there to go into a system, they all have technical data sheets, and those technical data sheets will tell us all of the information we need to know to set up the VNA. And then, of course, once we set the parameters for the VNA, we have to apply error correction or calibration. Uh, in today's case, the devices we're going to measure are SMA 3.5 millimeter, 2.92 millimeter. So we'll be using a 3652A calibration, mechanical calibration kit. But you should know that uh, when you perform the calibration, that's going to be determined by the DUT or device under test. In, in our case, as I said, uh, we'll be using uh, SMA 3.5 and 2.92 millimeter. But you may have filters that need to be measured on a probe station. Uh, you may need to measure waveguide um, and many other types of calibration. The ones that we see here are all supported on the vector star. So just as a reminder from our VNA fundamentals uh, webinar that we had a couple of weeks ago, um, here we have insertion loss and reflection measurements. And those measurements, transmission, forward is S21, reverse is S12. In our reflection measurements, return loss are S11 and S22. And our little uh, picture that we have there and there on the bottom will give you an idea of what those are. And of course, if you actually want to understand the math behind the S parameter measurements, uh, the Formulas that you see for S11 and S21, S22 and S12 are, are right there. And um, actually, if you look at the front of a VNA, those will always be labeled. And uh, that just 
helps you with the math that's going to be performed. And of course, uh, we utilize broad spectrum um, in our daily lives every day, whether it's automotive radar, um, communication systems. Uh, there's obviously spectrum utilized, uh, and we have a VNA that can cover uh, all of that spectrum. So common bandwidth measurements, which are the key points. Uh, we always want to look for the stop band, the pass band. Uh, when it's a band pass filter, you'll have stop band on both sides. And common measurements are 3 dB down, or 45 degrees in relation to phase. And then we have our stop band, which will be specified uh, at different frequency points with different amounts of loss. Also another measurement that's very common is a quality factor, commonly known as Q for a filter. And as you can see, we can automatically measure Q uh, on the VNA in the bandwidth uh, area right there. And then there's also shape factor measurements uh, that the VNA performs as well. And you'll commonly see these specifications in a technical data sheet for a filter. So here's some specifications for our low pass filter. And what you'll notice is the pass band is DC to 900 megahertz. And uh, the frequency cutoff, 3 dB loss, is 990. Then we have a stop band, and we have our VISWAR specifications. So if we look at the response of this filter, you can set your marker to the pass band, and you can see that we have less than 1 dB of loss for the pass band. And at the 20 dB mark, uh, or the um, stop frequency, the specification should be 20 dB of loss. And you can see that our, our filter is well within specifications. In that particular measurement, it's 38 dB. And then the 40 dB mark, or the uh, 1.7 gigahertz, uh, the specification should be a loss of at least 40 dB, and you can see that we have 59 dB of loss, so this filter is well within specification. High pass filters, uh, for this one, we can see that it is going to give us loss from DC to 70 megahertz, in that 70 to 95 megahertz will have a loss of approximately 20 dB. Our frequency cutoff, 3 dB point, is 120 megahertz. And our pass band is 133 to 1 gig. And you'll notice that we have VISWAR specifications as well for the stop band and the pass band. So if we look at this filter, you'll see that the performance is very good. Um, so we are blocking our low frequency. and the location of each marker is in relation to uh, the specifications we just discussed, and all of those are well within tolerance. Pass band filter, uh, obviously we're going to have a stop band on the lower and a stop band on the upper, and of course we have our pass band. And if we look at this, uh, the default specification for the traces that you'll see uh, for S11, S12, S21, and S22, we can see that our filter shape is very good. A lot of people like to look at a filter in uh, this mode where you have two traces on one trace layout. And uh, a common thing is to adjust the filter to fit it into the specification. So in this case, we can look at the reflection and transmission at the same time. 
and tune that filter. So here's some other uh, more advanced uh, ways to look at the response of the filter. And here you'll notice that you can put pretty much as many traces in, in one uh, layout as you want to, uh, or you could have them single. And of course, here uh, we're showing our queue. And uh, here we can see that this device is actually reciprocal, uh, our reflection in the forward direction and reverse direction has the same shape. And then of course, uh, oftentimes we will run into co-located uh, systems, uh, carrier aggregation uh, is one example uh, where you'll have uh, multiple frequency ranges and you'll actually have a filter uh, with a large bank on it and what it will do is uh, pass specific frequencies for AT&T or Verizon, T-Mobile. Uh, those are common applications for uh, bandpass filters that have several different ranges and you can measure up to 20 ranges on a particular filter. Uh, this is a Smith chart display, and I just put it in here to remind us that uh, when you're above the Smith chart, it's inductive, the response, and when we're below it, it's capacitive. And of course, we want to design a filter so that our passband is as close to the center of the Smith chart as possible. And that's what we see in this uh, bandpass filters response is the area of interest is very close to a perfect match right here. Um, at this point, I'm going to open it up to questions. Um, Tina, do you have any questions? <clears throat> Hi, Tom. Yes, I have a couple questions. Okay. Okay. Uh, the first one is. How much does an adapter affect the calibration of a VNA or the overall measurement? For example, if our VNA has an N-type connector, and so does the calibration tool, but then the filter we measure uses a SMA connector, how much would the adapter skew, skew the data? Well, you would have to actually measure it, and you could remove the adapters either with adapter removal or de-embedding. Uh, the most common way to address that is to measure the adapters and capture that as a .s2p file, and you can um, apply that S2P file uh, to your measurement and remove the adapters. Obviously, um, the most efficient way to do it is you should have a cal kit um, in the adapter type that you're going to utilize. Uh, but what you'll find is that SMA, you won't find an SMA calibration kit um, because SMA uh, connectors are commercial and generally they, they are not very repeatable. So you'll want to utilize either a 3.5 millimeter uh, calibration kit or a 2.92 millimeter calibration kit, uh, depending on your application. Um, and uh, so the best practice is to calibrate at your reference plane in the connector type that you're utilizing. But of course, uh, you can apply adapter removal or perform de-embedding. Thank you. <clears throat> Next question. Why does the Trace 1 S11 response look not uniform like the S21. Oh, let me back up here uh, to our display. And what you'll see is that um, this is S11, so that's the forward reflection. And we'll see the shape right here. And if we look at it in the same S22, you'll notice that it's the exact same shape. And that means that the device is actually reciprocal. 
the reason why you get this is that the energy is traveling through the device in one direction and then returning. So you're always going to have a certain amount of loss associated with any reflection measurement at the far side of your measurement or device. Okay. So it's basically a, uh, basically um, following the laws of physics of waveform propagation. Thank you. Next question. Do all Anritsu VNAs have the Q bandwidth measurement capability and is it an option or standard? Uh, they all do. All of the benchtop um, models uh, will have um, the shape factor, Q factor, uh, those types of statistics um, as well. And um, I'll bring up a VNA uh, display here um, in a second. Bear with me. And those are standard. They're not an option. So they're in every benchtop model um, that Anritsu has. OK. Can you see my screen, Tina? Yes, yes I can. The VNA? OK. Yes. So uh, we'll look at the S21. And what you'll notice is that under markers and marker search function, go to advanced. And I'm going to make bandwidth measurements. I have that turned on. And what this is giving me is my Q factor for this particular filter. It's uh, 24 dB. And then I also have my shape factor, which is 3.251 to 1. So those are all in the benchtop models. Uh, you also notice that you can apply a search, a frequency search. Here I can move right here. And uh, I'll go back and go into search range. And you can set the start and stop range right there. OK. And of course, uh, you can change this number to whatever uh, you need to measure. Uh, different filters have different specifications. Um, and that'll be indicated uh, and tell you what to set these values to. So, um, yeah, we can do that. Uh, another common measurement for a filter is group delay. And that we simply set, uh, you'd move your marker to the frequency where uh, it functions, and you can see that our group delay is uh, 8.1 nanoseconds. Another common measurement is slur, and within the passband, you'll have a specification. Uh, in our case, this is 1.107. There. Okay. Um, are there any other questions that we have? Um, I don't have any more questions at this time. Okay. Okay. Um, and we uh, will send out the presentation. And uh, let me pause this and put my email address um, up. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so if you have any questions on filter measurements or um, VNA operation, you can contact me, send me an email, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thanks, Tom. On behalf of Anritsu and our presenter, thank you all for joining us today. This concludes our webinar. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Bye. Bye.